All right, everyone. Welcome once again. It is Friday, and that means it is time for the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Series. I'm one of your co-hosts, Damon Pastalka, and that great person <laughs> right over there is not Kurt Anderson. Wait, I'm just wearing a mask. This is totally Kurt. Come on. <laughs> Wowzer! Kurt we've, got Na Ow. we've got Nicole Thank Donnelly you. in here today. <laughs> Take it over for Kurt. Sorry, Kurt. You never know. So, <laughs> Nicole, take it away. We're going to be talking today about building a story that engages customers and staff and really brings people into it. We got Morgan Norris here today. Take it away, Nicole. Oh, this is so exciting to have another fellow content marketer on the program today. I'm no doubt. so excited to just hear everything Morgan has to say about all that's happening right now with AI and all of that madness and SEO and can't wait to hear all about her expertise. She's got so much experience working at True Marketing as a brand strategist, senior brand strategist. And so, so excited, Morgan, for you to be on the show. Welcome. This is Thank awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, I have, I think just like my first question is, I hear that you have this amazing chocolate chip. <laughs> and I have to tell you, if I'm on my deathbed, the number one thing I want is a warm oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. Like that is like my favorite food on the planet. So I want you to, you can't, I'm, I'm sure it's a secret recipe, but give our listeners a little taste of what makes your your cookies so great with a secret recipe and on occasion like if you're gonna move overseas or if you're on your deathbed i i'll, I'll give it to you um but until then i just deliver cookies just deliver. Uh, to my friends and coworkers. so the thing about these cookies is they're like crusted you know you've got like kind of the crust on the outside and they're not i don't like an under baked cookie where it's like you know gloppy but it's still <laughs> extremely soft on the end oh my Ooh, so there's two tweaks, crisp on the out there's Ooh. two tweaks to the regular recipe and one is that you cook them shorter at a higher temperature and the other tweak is in a couple of ingredients and that's what you can't share Ooh. oh my but i did we just had a team retreat two weeks ago in florida our whole team met together and i brought frozen logs of cookie dough packed in ice <laughs> in my checked baggage. That's so amazing. That I could bake them hot and fresh when we got there. <laughs> hot, fresh cookies. Now, are you? Oh, Wendy said cookies made with love. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. Oh, my gosh. Right. So I have to ask, are you an oatmeal or a not oatmeal girl with your cookies? I love oatmeal. But for these cookies, these are plain chocolate chip co cookies. I can do like a snickerdoodle alteration but that's it and then i'm gonna leave the oatmeal cookies to somebody else to make sounds like you oh <laughs> there is nothing i don't I'm, I'm like you nicole if i had a cookie like that on my deathbed i'd go out in style right i agree there's exactly. just something about that not if the cookie can't be hard and yeah. like that no, it's not a good one soft. yeah but that crisp on the outside nailed that that's yep. for yes sure. yes no. yes I have one other question about your cookie recipe. Okay. <laughs> Just one kind of chocolate chip or more than one? Oh. Uh, I put one kind in there, Perfect. but I, I'd i be open to adding others. Yeah. I'm just Ooh. curious. And yeah. actually, if there's a bunch of little kids coming to my house, I don't put chocolate chips in them. And I put a lot of sprinkles so they don't get chocolate all over. Oh, that's yeah. nice. There you go. Right? Love it. Well, a, a fun fact is my wife made me chocolate chip cookies for Valentine's Day. That's Aww. how much I like cookies. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, was. So I was like, whoa, bonus. This is, this is great. Uh -oh. so, awesome. So take it away, Nicole. Let's talk about building the great, great stories. I want yes. to hear these great stories. I want to hear about this. Stuff. Yes, tell us. Let's start with that. So, Morgan, tell us you know, what do you guys do when you're working with clients? How do you help them develop their brand positioning and help them identify what their brand voice should be? And maybe tell us a little bit about why, why is that so important, especially for manufacturers to be thinking yeah. about that and planning that? 
Yep. So this is, it's a big question, but what happens is we, we all sit here and we hear about content marketing and we think I need content and we need a lot of content. What's going to go in it. <laughs> and realistically what happens, especially with this really B2B technical audience, or you're explaining complex products, you guys have a sales cycle that is six, nine, 12 months long. And so your salespeople might be there talking to customers, talking to prospects along the way, but they're not talking to them 24 seven. They're not talking to every customer all the time, every day. And so what you need is you need content there to fill those gaps and guide them through that, that buyer's journey. And so a few things that we like to start with are the first thing is positioning and messaging. So what happens there is we walk clients through this process where they're going to identify exactly who their customers are and who they're not. I always ask like, man, what, what business have you turned down this year? Who did you say no to? Who do you wish you would have said no to and why? Right. Yeah. And you can have a really lively discussion about, um, that's huge. So, Right. We said yes to this, but oh my gosh, we shouldn't have because <laughs> yeah, this aspect was too hard, right? Where yeah. are those customers? Um, what are their pain points? And I'll touch on that in a second. And then flipping. So those are about your customer and then flipping to your company, what it is that you offer and how do you deliver it? And if we can identify and define succinctly, if we can define each of those five points, who your customers are, where they are, why they need you, and then what you do, and how you do it, that is the journey that your customer's going on. And you're going to be able to provide content all throughout that journey because your content targeting who that customer is, you're just trying to meet them where they are. Maybe they're um, a new engineering grad right now. Maybe they're even in school right now and you need them. You don't need them to buy anything from you. You need them to use your tools in their lab in university so that when they have purchasing power, they get there later and they come back to you. Right. And so it's mm -hmm. being able to nurture people through this process. And one thing we've been talking a lot about lately is interviewing customers. Mm -hmm. So this, um, we just did it actually internally at true marketing. We were doing a brand project and, um, it was, hilarious because the same thing happened internally that always happens when our with our clients when i say i'll get we get together a room we create like a a brand um branding committee and so usually ideally that's a kind of a c-level type person it's somebody uh, that represents sales from a high level somebody that represents marketing from a high level and then i also really love to have an on the ground salesperson and an engineer working with the products or solutions, get all those voices in one room. Um, but what we do is we say, okay, we wanna to talk to some customers about what it's like to work with you. And so who would be some good customers to talk to? And somebody will throw out a name and they'll say, well, we know why they like working with us. And I'll say, well, I wanna understand, you know, how they found you, why they chose you guys over somebody else. And somebody else will throw out a customer name and they'll say, well, I know they chose us because of this. And that's exactly what our team did. I looked at our president and said, I want to interview some customers. And she said, yeah, but we know about this one and we know about this one. And that's not it. It's not this like general, we know why they're here, where they came from. We want to hear the words that they are using. And we want to hear them articulate the pain points they have in their own words. And so I love to get connected with like seven to 10 customers. And then we'll ask them questions. We make it really, really easy. A lot of times um, manufacturers are working with kind of the end customer is maybe selling some kind of solution that has all these manufacturers products or solutions wrapped up in it. They don't want to talk. They don't want to put their name necessarily to the manufacturer's brand. Um, and so talking to a customer can sometimes like doing a case study sometimes is like impossible, right? Having some branded named case study. But we just take all of that off the table and say, we just want to interview you to talk about your experience. Your Even your feedback is going to be presented anonymously with the kind of cluster of feedback that we get from everyone back to leadership. And it's for internal purposes only. And all of a sudden, all those barriers fall down and somebody says, great, give me a call on my way home from work. I'll be in the car at 530. 
perfect. Ooh. I just want to ask them a handful of questions about what challenges they face in their day-to-day -day job. I want to hear what the pressures are they have at work, but also what their goals are personally, right? We want to, we want to be that person's hero. We want to give them the product or the solution that they need that makes them excel in their job. And they've been all of a sudden they become an advocate for us, right? They're going to bring us in later. And so um, we interview customers and really pay attention to what themes come up to kind of often you take down kind of notes during those interviews and you start to hear the same things over and over again. So what themes come up and what specific words are they using? Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, were there any benefits that they experienced that they didn't even know they would experience when they decided to work? Ooh. Because we don't want to, those shouldn't be hidden, right? We should get out in front and market those. Yeah. Um, like the surprising, but I love that. The surprising, yeah. benefit. that's a great yeah. question. Yeah, no, and I love, I love the um, that I think it's just so key that you're going directly to customers and leading with the customer and also just hearing the words that they're using to describe the, the you know the client. That's so huge. Like we we do that too, where we put together a word cloud based on that yeah. feedback, and you can use that, and it makes it so much easier to create messaging when you're actually using the words that customers are saying because you're yeah. going to resonate mm -hmm. with draw on those people. It's just so much more efficient. That is amazing. Yeah. We had a customer a couple years ago who created coatings that go on plastic, like a polymer coating that goes, goes on plastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we interviewed their, we talked to their leadership team, kind of their branding committee first. And they said, here's why our product is better. Um, and one of the key things they were doubling down on was, um, was quality overall in the process. And they were messaging quality, 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 quality. And then I talked to their customers and it turns out what happens, multiple customers mentioned, what happens is if the polymer coating gets messed up and they have, they create scrap plastic, they have to like, he was like, just envision we have to like throw it in this bin. When the bin gets to a certain level, we have to melt it all down, stop the plant and start like spend an entire day using the plant tools to remelt all this plastic and basically recycle it into something usable again. And he was like, all of a sudden, everything is off track. And so, yes, the message was quality. It needs to be a good product. But the key for those customers that they, the thing they liked about our client was they were reducing the scrap they were producing. And when we flipped that message and talked about scrap reduction, it immediately related with their prospects. And it's just so interesting because it's it was it's the same general benefit, but the words they were using are so important to when you're targeting specific people. It's well, so much they, more specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Damon. Well, and they weren't the, the change there, they were speaking in their customer's voice mm -hmm. rather in their voice because you know, customer is going to assume quality, but how does it really help them? That's what they want to know. Right. How exactly. does it really help them? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you said, you said a couple things and, and this is one of the things that I, I really, I want to bring back up that I know a lot of people miss in marketing and it's, if you're in B2B marketing, a lot of times, if you're marketing to people in big companies, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be, and, and I love how you're interviewing customers because they've got internal politics they're dealing with they've got they're understanding their personal goals what are they trying to do it's such a big deal in in large companies it's not like it's much different than if you're you're selling to someone that's in a smaller company that may have more autonomy and do those kind of things i mean there are just certain things that you can do if you understand that that can drastically move you up in their priority to work with you Right. You make their life easier, make their make their chance of success in their position much better with your solutions. Yeah. You, you're going to move up that ladder. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you uncover some of those more like felt needs like that. Like you made my job so much easier because this, this and this. Like I want to call you first every time. Yeah. Well, people, everybody thinks that people buy because of data. And, and I, I personally believe that people buy because of feeling. 
yes, you have to, you have to, you know, you got to rationalize it in the end, but yeah. that decision to buy is really emotional mm -hmm. and the, the rationale or the rationale behind it just has to mean it's not a really dumb decision I'm making. Yeah. I'm going to try right? to, I'm going to try to rationalize it. If I really believe I really emotionally strong in it. I mean, how many, how many times, I don't know, people go out and buy a new car when they got one, you know, their other one sitting there. That's just fine. And, but I need that, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's so many things that we do like that. And that happens. And I think if you can with like you you guys are doing understanding the goals, understanding the day-to-day -day challenges of these people to really help them and get that feeling right. You can move up that ladder. Yeah, and get them to be known for as the person who's making good decisions and who's selecting good products, yes. implementing good software and systems. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. So I have a question for you about the buyer's journey. Like, typically, what percentage of the content that you create usually for your clients is going to be more of that like top of funnel, like demand gen kind of content, and what what percentage of it is more like the middle of the funnel, more end of the funnel? Like, how do you kind of break that down. What's your process for that? And what do you see works really well now? So a few things going into that, we find that a little over engineers, technical audiences are saying that a little over half of their buyer's journey, they're doing online first on their yep. own. Um, before they're engaging with sales, the, the point that they want to tip over and engage with sales is when they, there are a few things they realize their, their challenge they're trying to solve is so technically complex that it's going to involve talking to a person, right? Um, and at that point, they've usually narrowed down pretty close to a couple vendors. Um, so that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. There's got to be a decent amount of content out there in front of you to, um, to kind of pave the way there. But then one of the biggest things to look at is just where are your gaps? I think uh, we whole numbers and data. And so if we look at your total, you know, contacts and we're having trouble turning those contacts into marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads, where those gaps are, are where we want to supplement with content. So um, if we've got a lot of contacts, but we're not, uh, they're not qualified, we want to try and do some gated type content, some webinars and white papers and things like that to draw people into a next step and to get them to engage. Um, and that's kind of where some more marketing automation tools come in. But definitely when we start, the higher level brand content has got to be there to sustain people throughout their journey. I had a, we do this uh, writing course every year where we take people in and kind of go through a six week writing training and they get coaching along the way and things like that. And it's often people who are, they're responsible, either marketing isn't the only part of their job. Um, they've got some marketing in there and they need to get up to speed on some tools and practices to make content development easier, or they're the only marketer in their company and they're kind of facing all the pressures at once. But one thing um, I had a, a woman take this course last year and she wrote a white paper and she said, I'm getting like astounding results on people downloading this white paper. She was um, posting about it on LinkedIn. They included it as a CTA from an article that they put in a trade publication and the numbers are going through the roof on downloads. And she said, but after somebody downloads the white paper, I email them and ask them if they want to meet. And I'm getting like no responses and it's because they're not ready. They're not ready, right? We just introduced them to your brand, to your approach to solutions. And now we've got to wait and nurture them a little bit with some more content over time. So let's schedule out kind of, you know, e-newsletters at the end of every month with a roundup of content that's targeted towards them. So making sure we're doing that nurturing is, I think the most important um, versus kind of a, a number of pieces there, but you definitely need the content that people can go and access without you is important. Yeah. I love that. I love what you said yeah. there too about nurturing. And I think that's like so hard sometimes for, for business leaders to get their heads around is that 
it's not going to be a one touch and you're going to have a lead kind of situation. Right. Like there's like a mm -hmm. foundation that needs to be built and a relationship. It's like, <laughs> you know, you, you don't ask someone to go out on a date with you and then ask you to ask them to marry you. All right. <laughs> yeah. like, there is a yeah. process there. And, and I think that's important that, that, that buyer or, you know, business owners and leaders understand that, that this is, you know, very much a relationship as Damon has said before on my podcast, marketing is farming. And it's all about that long-term kind of investment. So that's great. Yeah, that's you awesome. do. You have to. We got a lot of guests here. I want to want to yeah point out a few. Wow, we got people in here. We got Vina and Gary. Of course, Wendy was here earlier, and Matt said yes. Nicole, <laughs> Whitney from Texas, and Whitney was was hey. nice enough. She said it was uh, glitching, so she put the Facebook uh, thing in here. The oh, cookies okay. got a lot of comments so far. And Brandon says, how do we, how do we move past the cookies? I agree. Brandon. I'm still back there with you. <laughs> somewhat. About cookies. Yeah. yeah. We can talk about some of the, the legit question. Who else? We got Sarah. We got some names I can't pronounce, but I'm going to put you on the screen. We got some from Morocco. <laughs> now, now I'm getting down because there's some good ones here. Cause that's this, that this is where um, Whitney was talking about LinkedIn glitch, but this is one and I can't, I can't pronounce your first name right off the bat, but this is awesome. Tell me a story and I will live in my heart forever. Ooh, that is so good. It's so relevant for today. So yes. For today. I saw that. I was like, this is awesome. Then we got Ingor and uh, yeah. So thanks so much. Thanks so much everyone for being here. Uh, we've got Morgan Norris with us today. So continue on. This is awesome. This is awesome. awesome. Well, I have a, I have another question for you just about SVO and AI. As, as yeah. everyone in the world has been hearing about ChatGPT, it's like exploded. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk about it, right? Because yeah. we are content creators, all of us here on this yeah. panel. And so it is definitely impacting us. It's impacting our clients. And I think, you know, as marketers, we have to be ahead of it. We've got to be staying up to date because the changes are happening all the time, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I just was talking with Wendy the other day and she was telling me that you guys just did this really great experiment on what the results are from, you know, chat GPT and how that compares to, you know, a real human writer, if you will. So I think I would love to just like hear more about that experiment. You can share that with the listeners first. And then I have some follow up questions for you about about like what you see, how you see this changing SEO going forward. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this is, yeah. So it's timely because we just put together a guide on this and I'll drop it in the chat in a second when I stop talking, but um, put together a guide on using generative AI for content development, uh, specifically for communicating about technical B2B complex topics. And what we did, so what's happening is Google right now is really favoring answers to direct questions. And so you think about when you go to Google and you type in a question and it pops up those little like snippet answers, mm -hmm. um, they are, Everybody wants snippets, but also snippets mean somebody's not necessarily coming to your site. They're getting their question answered and they're not even touching your your brand, your anything. They're getting like mm -hmm. your sentence answer. Um, so I have mixed feelings about snippets. Fine. But <laughs> Google is favoring these quick answers, which pairs with this rise of AI generated content, which means we can go into a tool, type a question, grab an answer dump it on our site. Okay, great. Problems with this are it's not any sort of branded content. Um, I'll talk about benefits in a minute because there are some benefits right now. But some of the issues that we're seeing is it's not branded content. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, if you try and get it to write about a brand, you hit a lot of snags because what these tools do is they're, they're kind of scouring all of the available information and processing and regurgitating it in a different way. And so plagiarism doesn't seem to be an issue, but they're paraphrasing and rewording stuff. And what you don't want is your brand reworded. I tell our clients, like we do a brand messaging project and you have messaging and you 
in a year, you're going to come back to me and say, maybe we should redo our messaging. And I'm going to say no, because <laughs> you interact with your messaging every day and you might be tired of it, but your customers don't. They interact with it like once a month or when they're in the sales process with you. That's it. They need years and years and years of that brand messaging coming over and over again. And if you try and write about your company or anything proprietary through an AI generator, it's just going to turn it into kind of like generalized much. Mm -hmm. And so don't do that. So those are kind of issues that we're seeing, mm -hmm. um, as well as like technical, there are, you'll find like technical inaccuracies and stuff. We were talking about this before we started, but part of it is engineers we find will search, they'll go through at least half of engineers will go to page five on search results to find the answer that they need before they even click on anything. Right. So they're, they're scouring through 50 results to find the right one. And to just assume that you're going to ask a question and the answer that spit out is the one that is appropriate for your audience is pretty naive to think. And so there's just, there's a lot of like hesitancy there. Things that these tools are working for, I think, are they make a really good uh, like brainstorm buddy. They make a good phone a friend. Yep. So <laughs> I love can... that phone a friend. That's awesome. Yeah, right? It's awesome to think about like as a research tool. Yeah, like, a research tool. Oh, yeah. In, in the same way, though, that if I was going to write about um, about uh, test and measurement equipment and what companies are facing when products go obsolete, I would pitter around Electronic Design Magazine and I would read some articles there. You kind of jump around. And so this is just one more tool that you can kind of use to jump around in there. I think sometimes writers have a hard time going from blank page to like your introduction sentence. And so great, use a tool like this to just be that friend as you're sitting by yourself with your computer to kind of go back and forth with, that works fine. Um, what we did on our site, and we kind of posted this all in this guide, is there are five different examples that we used and we walked through what tool we use. So we used um, Jasper, which is an AI uh, content writing tool. They have an SEO integration as well. We used CoWrite, which is a, a program by the platform Writer. We used ChatGPT, and we used um, MagicWrite, which is built into Canva, which is a design tool that we already use. So that one's low-hanging fruit. But we walk through kind of what we input, what it output, and then if and how we were able to use that. And so we did some different things like headline generation. I had one do an entire blog post on a technical topic, and then I posted the marked up version, started with the AI version, <laughs> and then posted it marked up. Um, mm -hmm. where it ended and the final post, probably 96% of it was different. So, and I bet it took mm -hmm. so much more time just to mark it up and edit it. Right. <laughs> That's what I was telling Wendy. I said, I didn't, uh, definitely when I write, went to write the next one, I did not use the tool yeah. again. <laughs> right. Because it took more time to actually comb through content that it created. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, I just thinking about this, the other thing that comes to mind is just truth. Like there's no way for this tool to determine what's actually true. And these tools, the way that they're built, the way that they're designed is it's just the more data that they ingest, they, they say they're going to get better and they're going to be more refined, but there's still no like source. There's no way to, de to determine what's true and what's not true. Right. And that opens up a whole can of worms because then if they were designed that way, who decides what's true and what's not, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think anybody using them has to go into this, you know, has to know like, okay, I can't confirm that what this is spitting out is actually the truth. And if you're dealing in, like you are with very um, technical buyers who are very niche, that's another challenge too, is like, there may not be content out there that they can even pull from because of what they're, what the technical topics you're talking about are so niche, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. For sure. And, and things like chat GPT haven't, um, it, they the like their splash screen comes up and says it stopped culling data in 2021, I believe. Yes. So, yes. Um, anything new it's, might it's, not be helpful. Yeah. yeah it's it's, it's got to stay relevant, and there's there's so many things it's like like you talk about. And you look at the you take that as we were talking before we got on today. 
one step further and Google with the snippets and and if and if AI changed a Google search to I search for something and it comes up with the answer. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you talked about the engineers going to page five to find the right answer. <laughs> How do you really believe that you're going to be able to do that, wow. that yeah. right answer over time for, for so many different questions? Yeah. And I see on there, Gary asked about, is it possible to train chat, chat GPT through conversation context? So chat GPT actually right now is starting to add chat GPT plus which again this is something that mm -hmm. the news is coming out every day yes. so that is that's definitely a next step so things i would i'm excited to see in ai tools is i would love to put in a 4000 word white paper and have it produce a a three blog series for me and like yeah. write that the intro and the outro yes. and like reference the the two between them like not a big deal but that would save me 40 minutes Yes. Um, and so there's some things like that. There are some training tools where the training tools right now are working are, um, so I mentioned co-write, which is an AI generator mm -hmm. tool from the company writer and writer also has a tool. They started with a tool that's similar to Grammarly. If you use Grammarly, that gives you suggestions and stuff, but in mm -hmm. writer, you can um you can like set your parameters and your tone and it basically you write then in the platform and it will say hey based on your style guide you need to refer to this product like this or um you know amazing even just the little stuff like as a company you use an oxford comma or it, you like input your style guide the way that you talk about products the way that you both style and substance so like things like capitalization and grammar but also um you know you're right it looks like you're writing this at a 12th grade reading level but your style is set to like eighth grade or whatever and so it can do that i actually had an interesting conversation at content marketing world last year um with somebody who had taken our writing course and he's now um his company has acquired multiple companies and he has acquired all these marketers and he said, I think I'm going to try instead of hiring an editor of buying the writer platform and putting all of our style and having all these teams use it so that all the content that's coming out of now one umbrella parent company looks and sounds the same. So. Interesting. That's that, there. Yeah. There's just so many different ways that we're going to see this used in the future that are going to be beneficial. You know, it's not going to, I look at it, like you said earlier, Morgan, it's, it's an assistant. It's a tool to help you. It's your, your buddy, when you're sitting there alone, brainstorming buddy, I think you said, or something yeah. like that. It's, yep. it's that that's, I've really found it helpful for that with my writing because you know, that your blank page staring and you go, okay, I'm going to ask two or three questions to get me thinking in chat GPT and it spits mm -hmm. out what you want and you go, Oh, there's a piece. There's a piece. There's a mm -hmm. piece. Now I'm going to start writing. Yeah, it'll and get you in the right mind frame, right? Yeah. 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 I just read but this. To let it go. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nicole. I was going to say I just read this really great quote from a copywriter, Jonathan Spooner, and I just think it. I just loved it. It just says, "Technology is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master." And I think this yeah. is a perfect example. There you go. Of this, like, there you go. You know, and it's true for any like technology that's come out, like think about when iPhones came out, there's like so much good and so much bad that comes of any new, you know, you know, the atomic bomb, for example, like so many mm -hmm. things. So there's going to be good and bad that's going to come from this. Um, and I think, yeah, like it's, it's going to be great for, you know, making it faster to create like, you know, repurposing content, I think like turning right. blog posts into social media posts, yeah. and, you know, audio transcripts into blog, you know, all of that. I think it'll be really really great for that's how we're using it yeah, yeah right and i think there's this these ai content development tools are coming out and that's people are getting really um excited by that news but i think we forget to we've been using some of these tools we've been using yeah. this stuff has evolved right because yes you don't need a transcriber anymore we can put we can put this video recording in and get it 90 percent there mm -hmm. through a voice to text um kind of 
yeah. program. Like and Auditor there's... AI, which we love. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. We use it every week. Yeah. But you know, I think there's also something for like small business owners who don't have like a content writer on staff. I think there might be a real like um, uh, they might be really tempted to just and I know many of them are right now going to the chat GPT and yeah. saying, write a blog post for me on this topic. And I think there's real danger for small business owners or people that don't have, um, you know, the resources in, in house to do that, uh, to, to approach it that way. And just cr think about this as being like a way for them to generate like unique content because it's just not that's not i don't think a, how it should be used or how it's designed or how it's going to work truthfully right to help you so we do like man as marketers and i mean businesses google's algorithm updates can be painful at times <laughs> but often <laughs> you said that it was so like calmly yeah, you know yeah. that, <laughs> is, you know, that is like you know very it can be very um, and very emotional for yeah but they are often they're they're constantly solving for some kind of issue that's coming up and you had mentioned seo before but we we're going to have new problems and the new problems are going to be generically junk content that's created mm -hmm. and then bounce rates right because if you're writing to answer a specific question or kind of those like listicle buzzfeed type articles that's like you know 10 reasons your makeup's not staying on whatever <laughs> right like it can write that for you and then as a reader you scan that and you are off that page yeah. in three seconds and you haven't engaged with anything you you have no recollection of what brand you went to and so i do think that um there will be a push to create even stronger, more unique content yeah. to really capture audiences um, and yeah. gain traffic that way. Yeah, I think like even this this is a perfect example of of something that AI can't really replicate is investing, you know, for, for manufacturers out there really thinking about how can you get involved in live events, podcasting, yeah. you know, these types of situations where you're basically creating thought leadership in real time yeah. you know, and positioning yourself as an expert versus something derivative that an AI bot can pull off the web, you know, from anything. So I think it's a good yeah. thing for, for people to be thinking about. Damon, you're like ahead of the curve here. Who knew? Who knew you were going to be ahead of the no curve? Way. No way. I will never say that. <laughs> 125 you know, episodes in. <laughs> when when you talk about it, Morgan, though, and the people that, you, you know, you talk about engineers and stuff. I did at one time back in the Stone Ages, went to school for engineering. And, uh, you know, the technical stuff that they're talking about, whether you're talking about transducers or design mm -hmm. or whatever the heck you're talking about. Um, you know, I think a live discussion mm -hmm. and the content you generate from that is so powerful because yeah. the again you come back to why do people want to learn more about you the problems you're solving and things like that yes they want to learn how to solve the problem but they also want to learn about the people that are solving the problem that mm -hmm. they would have to be working with and i think that what we're talking about and and really is, is it's the title, you know, building a story that engages customers, that brand voice. And if your brand voice is going to be, yes, I can teach you how to do, you know, nuclear fusion if that's what you want to do. Yeah. But we're going to have fun doing it. And you're going to be, you know, you're going to be comfortable alongside us the whole way because we help people this way. And they yeah. get to know that part of it that really allows them to engage with the brand. Right. And the people. Well, and it opens up. The organization too, I think, because in the past we've thought, okay, our CEO needs to be our thought leader mm -hmm. and they're going to get out yep. there and they're going to speak at this conference and they're going to author this article and this is it. And all of a sudden now this has gotten to be a layered approach, right? As a company, mm -hmm. we've got to decide what topics are we ahead on? What topics are we so entrenched in that we know them back to front and can talk about them? What does it look like for the CEO to talk about that? What does it look like for the VP of engineering to talk about that? And what does it look like for the design group manager and the new designer mm -hmm. that we just hired out of school? 
What does it look like for all of them to talk to that message? And I think that that will become so much more powerful. And we are going to have to switch to conversation so quickly because um, like you better believe our my kids aren't going to turn in an art or a paper on the five main themes of the great Gatsby. Like they can write that in two seconds with these tools, right? Yeah. They're going to have to be, um, it's going to have to be kind of processed knowledge and things that can be delivered on the spot. You've got to own it so well that you can talk to it on the spot. So yeah, I think it, it speaks to like the importance of companies to really have strong points of views, mm -hmm. whatever the topic is, whatever their point of view is, yeah. to have a point of view so that it's not just like generic, whatever, like, and I think that's really great that, that, you know, what you just suggested there is like going, you know, as business leaders, really asking them, what are the topics that you want to be known for that you have deep expertise on and like yeah. really getting focused and strategic about that and making sure that where, where where you're creating content that you're really having a strong point of view on those topics yep for sure some and and then you said process knowledge i wrote it down just because i think that is where if you're if you're if you have like you said you're building the right story but then you can share process knowledge with people i'm not just talking about how i do nuclear fusion Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how you how you can do nuclear fusion. It's mm -hmm. how I've done it and the the challenges we've had and what we're going to need to look at in the real world and all this other stuff that makes us feel well, it brings the human element into what we do. Yeah. And that's where people can engage and we we come back again to, you know, people know do we business with who they know like and trust. Yep. Yeah, you know, that also speaks to kind of Google's changes with their algorithm. It's always historically been eat, right? Like expertise, authority, and trust are the three main things that they use to kind of rank mm -hmm. content. And that's shifted to be this new, like they've thrown an experience now. Mm -hmm. It's not just expertise, authority, and trust. Now they're also ranking based on experience. And I I think this this is all going to just continue to evolve in that direction where people you know, they're, they want to hear your experience. They want to hear your stories. They want to hear how you did it. And, you know, and that's what people are going to use. That's going to be kind of like the, the thing that they're going to be using to, to, to trust you. Yeah. There's, there's, it, it's going to require leadership to open their hands a little bit um, and both kind of give the training that's needed throughout the organization for people to be able to talk to some of these topics and then also be willing to do that. I remember working for, you know, technology companies in the early 2000s, and we would have people, um, really fantastic engineers, but that from that C level space that they're saying, no, 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 don't let them talk. Don't let them talk. Like we need to be in complete control mm -hmm. of this message. And, um, oh, but we're going to have to just give some training and then be willing to open that hand if we want to stay engaged in the conversation at every level. Mm -hmm. so, I think that's really great advice because I will tell you some of my clients have voiced that same concern to me. Mm -hmm. The leadership is like, I'm not comfortable with some of our staff members going out and sharing on posting on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that approach of like, okay, well, if that's the case, you know, how can we address that objection from senior leadership? Well, we need to make sure that we're training them and that yep. they, you know, they have really a good understanding and knowledge of these topics so that we're not going to worry what they're going to share and whether or not it's accurate. So that's, that's really great advice. I love yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are running into our our time, and and <laughs> I want to say a couple things. Morgan, you guys are speaking at the Electronic Rep Association contra conference next week in Austin. Tell us a little bit about what's going on there. We are, yeah. Wendy and I are leading a session that's Monday and Tuesday next week in Austin. Um, electronics reps, manufacturers. Um, and there we're going to be talking about, we'll talk a lot about kind of research and buying habits of technical audiences, and then really kind of digging into crafting your message, creating content um, that's strong and can live there for your prospects to engage with when they're not engaging with you personally. Uh, and so that'll be next week. And we're looking forward to it. Oh my gosh. I saw you guys present at the industrial marketing summit last fall and I was just like blown away. You guys did such a tremendous job together presenting on the buyer's journey. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank I'm you. Impressed. So anyone out there, if you have a chance to see Wendy and Morgan in action at an event, they are just 
they do such a superb job. I learned so much from, oh, from them cool. during that presentation. And I know that anybody who goes there and, and sees you guys in action, it's going to be such a great experience and they're going to walk away with tons of information. So Thanks. check that out. Appreciate awesome. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm trying. I'm not usually doing this, but I tried to share the the link to your uh, marketer guide to oh, generative no. AI in the post. So okay. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it got there. I put it in there. Um, want to thank you for coming today, Morgan. Yeah, awesome thanks for having me. And yeah, it's sweet. always nice having Nicole here. Woo. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's never the same without Good Kurt. Job. Kurt. We miss you. Come back. Yep. yep. Bowser, yep. where where's Kurt Anderson when you need him? Right. <laughs> yep. That energy, but yeah, this has been super fun. I'm like, I'm super. It has been really an honor to be able to to have this conversation with you, Morgan, because I just have so much respect for you and look up to you. So, hey. I'm so cool. Honored. So thank you. So cool. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing the information. And and Matt had one question at the end is when we were talking about employees yeah. and, and other people being at, I think what you said, Morgan, was relevant for this too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to have an employee that wants to start a podcast for the company, you just need to make sure that you're, you're, or be on one, or you're going to be on yeah. one. Everyone should know, you know, what, what the expectations are. And I think then let them go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and if you want to, if you want to start one, go be on a few first and then decide if you really want to start one or if you would just like yeah. to be on them. That's yeah. a really great, great. <laughs> um, and yeah. I think progressive companies, they're, they're going to have to be thinking the, the companies that decide to do this kind of work, mm -hmm. do the podcasting. Those are the ones that are going to be succeeding in the years ahead. So you got to get on the train. Got yep. It. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> That's for sure. So, Morgan, what's the best way to get a hold of you, too? I always like to make sure people yeah. understand that. Yeah. Um, you can connect with me through LinkedIn or my email address is Morgan, M O R G A N, at true marketing, T R E W marketing.com. All right. So awesome. Email me. Awesome. All right, Morgan. Well, next time I come to Georgetown, since it's just around the corner. I know. So fun. <laughs> Excellent. We can go get a cupcake at the Georgetown Cupcake. And I will bring you cookies. It's not a cookie, but maybe we can do a trade. I'll get right. you a cupcake. You bring me a cookie. Let's do it. We'll be happy. I so think that would be an awesome day. An awesome <laughs> day. Well, thanks everyone for being here. Thank you for being here, Morgan. Nicole, thanks so much for helping today and, and yeah. co-hosting. So incredible getting to have you. And today, talking you and Morgan, the conversation was, was really, really special to be able to listen to. Yeah. And... Thanks everyone else for being here today. We have too many to mention, but we appreciate you all. Come back again next week. We'll have another episode of Manufacturing E-Commerce Success. And who knows who you'll see on. <laughs> Ooh, mystery. <laughs> have a good one, everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. All right. Yeah. All right. Hang out for a minute, Morgan. We'll talk when we're done. <laughs>